so here we are on the Gale Force 34 second wind with Elliot Smith who is the youngest skipper in the race and the second American in the race. Elliot, how do you feel with a couple of days to go before racing? Um, I feel a little overwhelmed but uh, and somewhat unprepared but I think everybody, well maybe I shouldn't speak for everybody but um, yeah I think nobody's ready enough for something like this you just gotta go uh, one way or the other so I'm feeling pretty good. So what have you got um, you, you mentioned you've still got a few bits left to do what sort of things are they just kind of incidental things or are they still major? Uh, yeah they're probably major for most people but um, we're running a new reef line system which uh, yeah I'm usually only uh, doing all reefing at the mast so we're kind of switching that and maybe running some lines back to the cockpit. Um, I assume that's to keep you a bit safer during heavy weather? Yeah and well I just had trouble with too many lines on the mast and it was just a mess and the way the boom was set up before um, yeah it was just a little strange so then I also don't have a wind I have a wind generator but I have no means of mounting it and it's a very heavy one um, so that's probably not going to happen, which is unfortunate. Um, so so you're just this. relying on your solar panels then? Yeah, and they're not really well mounted right now. <laughs> uh, the frame is bent on one of them, and then uh, the other ones are, yeah, so they're just not like, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we got some work to do, but all the food and I got my green card, so everything else is uh, up to specs and I feel good about. No, that's good. Well, getting to the start line and getting a green card is, is half the battle, as they say. Yeah. And how did you cross over from the US to France? Yeah. Um, how was that? You, that was your first kind of ocean crossing. Yeah, it was my first ocean crossing and I, it went super well. Um, yeah, I had a few malfunctions. Um, I lost the furler for a little bit uh, due to different I changed something on the rig and, and ended up wiggling anyways yeah so there's just a few minor things but um, yeah otherwise it was pretty easy I was kind of shocked the main focus was teaching myself celestial navigating along the way because I kind of left without knowing how to do it so uh, but halfway through um, I finished the, my little workbooks and read through Bowditch a few times and uh, are you feeling more confident Oh, and Celestial? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, once you kind of figure it out, it's just like, you know, making sure you are diligent about uh, your numbers, doing everything slowly and right, and also, you know, paying attention, especially when it's cloudy, and uh, really being ready to take a sight at any time. Um, that was a struggle in, the, in my trip, just no sun, no sunset, no stars for most of the trip until near the end, so, yeah. Kind of came down to the wire, but yeah, I got them done. And obviously you've done a lot of the work on the boat yourself. How has that gone and what major changes have you made? Yeah, most of the work was done by myself in the beginning. And then near the end, uh, about three months ago, right before my crossing, Josh, who's one of my managers, uh, he's up there doing work right now. And um, I mean, him and another guy, Vanya, who's you know helped me you know, in a lot of ways, including financially, and we just, together, we've just put in so many hours uh, in the past two months, and um, yeah, so it it's come a long way in just two or three months, you know, so much new things, new sales, or new to me sales, and uh, new lines on the boat, and all sorts of stuff, so it's pretty exciting. Is there anything you're worried about? Um, about the start line, or like before the start? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of concerned about, yeah, power consumption, um, and, but my power consumption is really low, so hopefully I don't need much to actually, you know, power anything up, just a few things to charge, and uh, I have a fridge on the boat, but it just broke two days ago, so it's, uh, that's probably going in the trash before I leave, or maybe I'll try and fix it en route, but in other words, yeah, I don't have much besides the HF radio and, uh, safety stuff to charge. Okay. Can you show us around the boat? Would that be yeah, okay? Yeah, absolutely. So, Sonica, I mean, you've got a pretty big 
telehandle here. Just uh, right. make sure we're a little... He's got the boom up, so okay. I don't... Yeah, maybe if you'd be lower than the boom. Uh, yep. Just in case. <laughs> don't want the boom to hit you. No, you're right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so right now, you know, this is the cockpit. Got uh, We got a fancy new sheeting system. Before, I had really small ones somewhere. I don't know, but there was only a three to one uh, pool on it before, so we got this crazy double sheet system by some local people here that make them, and it's beautiful. I'm really excited for that. Make my life a lot easier. Um, I have most of my lines going to the mast. I don't really have any halyards or anything going uh, back or... Um, yeah, the reef lines, we are using slab reefing, but we're going to try to run them back. Um, yeah. Are you worried about kind of having to go to the mast, um, especially in heavy weather? Um, no. <laughs> You're going to be yeah. obviously clipped on and... Y yeah, it depends who's asking. <laughs> uh, no, I think uh, half the time going to the mast is good. You can go out and check things, you know, if you're staying inside because all your lines are here and you're not checking things as much, you're not willing to go out. This kind of forces you to go out and see how things are going and how things are changing. Um, and yeah, it's good for me. I'm young. I can do it. I can hold on tight. And uh, I would. It would be cool to have granny bars, but uh, uh, we don't have them. So that's that. Just hold on tight to the mast. Yeah. And obviously just looking aft here, so you've got um, a hydrovane. Yeah. Uh, the hydrovane works well for you. Yeah, it was epic. I, it was my first one. Uh, I've used Servo Pendulum in the past, which I like a lot, like Aries and stuff, but um, yeah, so it took a, a, well, actually it was a pretty quick learning curve. It was really easy. Um, and I think that's what's nice about it, it's simple and also steers the boat by itself, and yeah, I love it. I think it's awesome. I wouldn't change it. Um, I think that was a big pivotal point in my uh, attempt at getting here was once I was able to get the hydrogen on the boat, I think people started being like, oh, he's serious, he might make it. And uh, people's opinions started changing on my uh, arrival or not. So, pretty cool. I love the hydrogen. Yeah, so, any questions you got? I mean, I don't know. Well, so you've got um, kind of big throughout events. Of yeah, yeah. Are you, uh, are they kind of, can you seal some of one of them off and really yeah, back Yeah, or? I can seal either of them up yeah. and I can seal them up from below as well if I don't want to go out. Um, and yeah, I'm a huge, I think ventilation's important. If people don't have ventilation on this boat, their boats, I think they're insane. Uh, mold and all sorts of problems in the Southern Ocean sealed up for so long. Um, but yeah, I have a Hank on staysail. Um, I don't like furlers. I almost didn't do a furling head stay. Um, so like you went a, for it in the end, was that just for ease? Yeah, because I already had it and this, the sail I had was already made for furling and so it would have costed more to switch to Hank on, unfortunately, but uh, so that's what I stayed with and uh, I still don't really like it, but um, hopefully it doesn't give me too much trouble. Okay. Yeah, and then we got a new to me sa main sail, which is really exciting, with a nice smiley face at the top. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I got a new jib that's for the Southern Ocean. It's stowed below, and when I get down there, I'll switch it. This one's pretty big. My staysail is probably as old as the boat, but it doesn't get used that much. I have a storm jib, which I'll use when it gets nasty. Um, yeah, new running backstays, which is exciting. And Are these 10 meter? 10, 10 millimeter? I think so, yeah. Yeah, should be. I don't know, and I'm bad with the, I'm still on the American uh, inches. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I, I will say that something different is, I'm, as of now, I, I would not like to be, but as of now, I'm the only boat without a Dodger. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, are you worried about that? About trying to seek kind of shelter in really bad weather? Yeah, I think it's a little bit concerning. Um, what's more concerning is my lack of, ability if it's raining to keep a big hatchway of airflow going um, and also yeah it's you know it's hard to time a wave and, you know you can't really tell if you're trying to get in and out like and a big wave crashes over while you're trying to get in and out everything's soaked below it puts a 
you know, little literal damper on situations. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we got plywood on the dock, and hopefully I can cut it up later this, tonight or tomorrow morning and uh, sand off a little bit of the paint and then just glass tab it in. Just um, to give yourself a little protection. Yeah, just a little one. Uh, Earthon has a small little one that I really like and just be a little, a little half box, just a little something. But Can we yeah. go down below? Absolutely. Look down below? Yep. Yeah. It's pretty messy right it's now. It's all right. Everyone's boat's been messy. Yeah, everything's everywhere. <laughs> Usually it's, I try and keep it tidy because uh, Josh uh, taught me so, so I'm <laughs> trying to learn. Um, Okay, can we yeah. start in the four peak? Yep. So obviously you got the bulkhead in there. Yeah, we got the bulkhead. Josh did that. I I was uh, busy doing um, courses f for the race, but yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. Mm. You got all the bottles. You can see them a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's it's strong as hell. And we got survival suit, sails, um, spinnaker that's smaller than my big jib, but it's what I have. <laughs> uh, food. Food, food, food underneath. And are you going for freeze dried or? Is yeah, I, I have like 500 plus, almost 600 plus meals of dehydrated food um, from a company in uh, Maine. And they're awesome, good to go, super good food. I'm really stoked. I, I paid a lot of money for it, but uh, I think it'll be worth it if, as long as I have rainwater. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I have spare engine parts up there and uh you know anchor stuff um some clothes you got a head in there Are you yeah i just have a head or it's bucket? just a compost bucket okay but i mean it's not even there right now yeah but yeah fridge that doesn't work um safety uh, emergency med kit hangs in there uh, yeah more food gets stacked here and lashed down i have these yeah. bolts that uh, i can tie things into just some like pad eyes here and on the other side. Um, yeah, so this will get rope tied in. Yeah. Uh, there's a small water tank, big water tank under the boat. How much um, water are you carrying? Uh, like 120 gallons. So like 400 something liters, I, I guess. Um, um, yeah, off, uh, and then I got like, uh, I don't know, 150 days of canned food. Um, all vegetables in here and then all meats and fruits in the, another locker back there. Um, on which bunk will you sleep on? Have you decided? Uh, both. Both. Yeah, I'll switch. This is one I'm going to try to keep the mainly dry. I have a little divider that clips on here to here. So if I'm dragging wet sails across, hopefully I don't get that area wet. All my books and cassettes are here. Um, it's a lot deeper than it looks, but there's a ton of books and a, I have a ton of cassettes thanks to my buddies back in Florida that um, made a bunch for me so I'm really excited about that. Oh that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you've obviously got your galley area here. Yeah I'm using propane. Okay. Um, we're trying to find a few more tanks which is a uh, which has been tough. Yeah. Um, everybody has different fittings in Europe so I'm trying to figure that out. Hopefully soon, because otherwise I won't have enough to cook. Okay. Um, <laughs> and here, obviously, your nav station. Yeah, nav station. You know, I can take this little cloth thing out, clip it onto here and here, and that way I can kind of still work when I'm on the other tack. Mm -hmm. um, SSB, VHF, AIS stuff, solar panel chargers. Um, yeah, so... I think I have enough charts to get around. Kind of looking at them now, and I'm like, oh man, I'm missing a few close up ones of the stopovers, but um, I think I'll be all right. You reckon you'll be okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. And for you, what would be kind of, what are you aiming for with, by competing in this race? Um, yeah, to finish first, and then uh, second would be to win. But um, yeah, I, I, finishing is just so monumental. and. I'm really excited to, uh, yeah, give it my best go. And are you feeling the kind of GGR family love that everyone talks about? Yeah, definitely. I think so. Um, yeah, no, everybody helps each other out, Everyone, at least for now, before the race. <laughs> um, yeah, people have given each other things. I've been gifted a lot, and I've tried to give as much as I can back. And 
I'm super thankful for all that and generosity. Um, you excited for the start? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm a little nervous. I've never done a race, period. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, the start line kind of makes me makes me sick being so close to a bunch of boats. But, uh, yeah, I think it'll be, it'll be fun. I'll enjoy it. But I, I think it'll be really, really sad seeing... Uh, my girlfriend Josh and my dad's in town. Uh, saying goodbye to them for so long is it's gonna be pretty tough. But do you think um, you'll be be okay with that though? You'll think cope with the isolation. Yeah, I love being by myself. I, I love being around people. I'm pretty tired right now, so I might not be super joyful. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, right now. But usually, I love talking and being around people. It's but being by myself is equal. I enjoy my company and. Um, I think I've been around so many people lately, the past month, and so much attention. <laughs> uh, is yeah. it quite overwhelming, the amount of attention there is on you and how your preparation's going? Um, it's overwhelming considering how much work I still have to do. I think I would be better handle, I would be better off handling it if I was more prepared already. But I don't think I expected that public people can walk up to and basically step on my boat anytime they want all day and then a partying all night uh, it's pretty insane for two weeks you know considering all of us are still working on our boats if it's the Vondi globe and we have a professional team working on the boat all day then it's another story but um yeah otherwise uh it's been it's been awesome the people here are really fun and it's cool to have so many people support say like sailing and single hand sailing in specific it's pretty awesome good luck Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it.